Luminar Halo is our latest generation of LiDAR device for automotive. It allows the vehicle to see hundreds of meters ahead down the road in whatever weather condition the vehicle is in. And that paints a picture for the car of exactly what is ahead. Is the road straight? Is it curving? Is there an obstacle in the road? Is there another vehicle ahead of the vehicle that you're driving? The vehicle manufacturer can then use that information to make decisions such as automatic emergency braking, collision avoidance, etc., all with a goal of keeping the vehicle and the passengers safer. We went to work to try to see how could we improve the performance an order of magnitude. And by performance, it's everything from how do you reduce the cost? How do you reduce the power consumption? How do you make the size smaller? How do you make it fit more easily into cars or any, any type of application? How do you make it see better under uh, all kinds of conditions? In order to really be low cost and low power, we had to look at all the compute, develop new algorithms, and then profile those algorithms in a full system. After we completed all our analysis, we were able to say, okay, if we take this core over here and put it into a specialized ASIC, which is a fixed function accelerator that only focuses on this type of perception, then we can make everything else low power. The core gets compressed into this one ASIC that we then build that is the absolute best in terms of this signal processing needed and algorithms needed for a LiDAR. Most of the market was founded around existing technologies at a wavelength around 900 nanometers. And Luminar operates at a very different wavelength up around 1500 nanometers. This is further away from human vision, uh, further out in the infrared spectrum. The big difference practically is that at 900 nanometers, you can use silicon technologies for detection. They've been developed for camera sensing and other applications like this. But because it's so close to human vision, the restrictions on how much light that can be safely sent in the world are much tighter. You're just outside of human vision, and that makes it more potentially dangerous to your eye, particularly your retina, the sensitive bits, your detector in the back of your eye. Out at 1500 nanometers, this is way past human vision. And so the amount of energy that can safely be sent in the world is much higher. And so as a result, this gives us the ability to send more light out, which allows us to see things much further away and send more measurements out so we can see them in more resolution. If we look at the broader context, if we look at active sensing in, in aerospace and defense, these are the wavelengths that they use when they need to see kilometers because there are massive benefits. Penetrating through dust, penetrating through weather, and just the sheer distance of detection are the same reasons that attracted us to it. Uh, and we can see it as, as a differentiator, sure, but also more an enabler in, in all of what we're trying to do for vehicles. When we see these amazing progress that some companies have had in, in using cameras all around cars, that's great. You know, AI is coming very far. But when you then say, okay, why are they able to make the progress that they have been able to make? It's because they've been using LiDAR as the ground truth. That is what reality is. You want to use reality, not some perception of reality. These are things that can be the difference between life and death. We build a sensor that goes into cars, creating an invisible shield. And what that invisible shield basically does is it creates a real-time 3D map of everything that is around the car. But not just two meters, three meters, four meters out. It's superhuman. It's able to see with centimeter precision out to 300 meters in complete darkness and rain and under almost every condition there is. And that's the type of thing that we humans can't even do. And we can't see in a wide field of view. The farther out you can see something, the safer you can make the car because you can predict things that start happening farther away. So you have chance to break and, and react. So it really gives you in your car this safety net where a car should be able to predict everything because it knows where everything is at any given time. You want something that is industrially pleasing to look at. And so what we've managed to do with Halo is really focus in on that and say, we only want something now that at most would stick up about 16 millimeters above the top and still have this series of laser beams that can shoot out and map the world in 3D instantly. We've put so much thought into the design and packaging on this device. It's already won multiple design awards and is nominated for additional ones. And to me, that's very unusual for essentially a subcomponent of a larger product. What we're seeing in the LiDAR market right now is a breaking of most of the roadmaps of LiDAR producers. 
They are creating a thread of development that is chasing, to be quite honest, our specification, chasing us on performance, trying to catch up in range, resolution, and they're creating a thread to drive towards the packaging goals, make the thing small, low power, low cost. At Luminar, we continue to try to drive towards both of these things at the same time. And so what we see with Halo, it's our smallest and most performant product to date. The rest of the marketplace is trying to compete with those two things with separate products. You can either fit this thing behind a windshield and sell it for $200, or you can meet all the requirements of the valuable use cases like highway autonomy. And at Luminar, we continue to believe that that isn't the business case that will win in the long run. It is a product that can cover both. And that's what Luminar Halo strives to deliver on.